Howdy y'all, my name is Brunt Halfaton, Miss Strunner, Tour War of the Miss Strunner Tribe, and today I wanted to talk to y'all about Blood Furnace. Blood Furnace is a hot mess of an instance. There's a lot to watch out for, and I wanted to take y'all through pull by pull and just talk about what's going on and how I do things. So, first things first, you've got a couple pretty simple packs up here. These two guys with sword and board. These ones, as you might imagine, they have a lot of armor. They can be stunned by physical. They do a shield slam, which is a stun and knockdown. As a quick tip, I don't know if you saw from my other videos, but the way I'm using these target markers is by using the F keys. So F1 is bound to skull, F2 is bound to X, F3 is bound to triangle, and so on. Allows me to do that really fast. So we're coming up in this room here. I already talked to the rogue before this and I said you're going to be sapping the diamond. So anytime I mark a diamond, he can just sap that. I need to go get my... I'm going to equip my bow here. Got a nice bow. I'm going to pull this one back. This is a caster pack. Here's the thing with heroics. You want to play it nice and steady and nice and safe. That means giving ample room for the pulls. Stuff can go haywire. Sometimes people accidentally pop a fear and stuff runs off. So pull in the back, playing it safe. That is prudent and wise. Also, I don't know if you can hear, but there's fireworks and stuff going off in the background. So that's what that noise is. It's the 4th of July right now. People are celebrating the United States of America. That was the Independence Day from Britain. Britain was doing all kinds of shady shit, like taxing people's stamps. Who even uses stamps anyway, let alone tax them? So this pull wasn't too hard, but we'll just keep with it. Be disciplined about it. This pack you can skip as long as you hug this left-hand wall here. And also, we've got a good bit of room here, so I'm going to do a charge pull. That's a charge into a shield slam, and I interrupt that fireball cast. Nice thing about Thunder Fury proc is it does not break sap. Another little quick tip, War Stomp also does not break sap as it does not deal damage. Keeping up that battle shout, just working through these pulls nice and easy. Alright, another one of these two packs. Every time you finish a pull, it's a really good habit. It's kind of like checking your mirrors in the car. You just check your healer's mana. So my healer, Braun here, he's a druid healer. He's got really nice regen and everything, but even healers with good gear, sometimes the pull gets scuffed and they're oom as hell. You can't just assume that they have the mana to pull every time. All right, coming up these steps. We gotta watch out. There's some assassins. There he is. See that hunter just put down a flare? That helps. Another thing you can do is if you're a warrior, you can just shout. Let it out. Demo shout will break these out of stealth. But mainly you just want to keep an eye on your healer. Make sure nobody jumps on your healer. There he is. Two of them. I'm just going to snap call. Mark these, skull and X, so people know DPS order. If you establish a DPS order and at least put a skull on the field, then the DPS are able to focus fire a lot better. I know a lot of tanks, they're complaining about their bad DPS and stuff, but the more information you give the DPS, the better they can do their job. So it's not all on them. If a run is bad, just because they're attacking a bunch of stuff and you can't hold threat, Part of that is your ability to communicate where your threat is going. So when I mark a skull, I primarily focus my threat on the skull, and then I start working on X a little bit. I just want to keep X on me, and I want to keep skull on me. And if they're focusing on skull, I need to focus my threat primarily on skull as well. All right, there's a patrol guy here. There's a nice step here. You can mark him. You should be able to pull this guy first, just on his own. So I'm going to wait here. Get a pull. And he really just doesn't care. You just got shot in the chest with an arrow and he's like, okay. 
Because that's how they live here in the Blood Furnace. It's not a very nice place. Can interrupt that corruption. Nice cheap shot from the rogue. These warlocks, they don't really hit much for physical. It's all about those spells, so... This corruption, it ticks for 929, which is a lot. It's a magic effect as well. We have a priest. They're able to dispel that. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and give the rogue a sap mark. And another nice thing whenever you're marking the sap target is you want to give the rogue one that doesn't force them to get in too bad of a spot. So the one that's most exposed, basically. If there's a mob with their back already facing y'all and it's the closest to y'all, that would be the best sap target. Because if you make them go in front of other mobs, they have a greater chance to get caught. And rogues don't do as well out of stealth before the pull starts. In stealth is safe. Just gonna pull this one back. Keep it nice and chill. What is with these guys? They just don't give a crap about arrows. I shot him. Pretty easy pull. Alright. Give him that sap target. You can hug the left hand side and skip these. So I'm just gonna shield bash this one, or shield slam, and I'll spell reflect maybe. Nope, this imp isn't casting. There we go. Shield bash, interrupt, shield slam, build threat, tab over, devastate. Devastate Heroic. Alright, coming up. Got another two pull. We could try to sap these. Let's just test it out see what we can sap. Humanoid CC is very good in Blood Furnace. That means rogues with their sap, mages with their sheep. Warlocks have a seduce. Hunters have their trap. Priests can even mind control. That works. We may try that up ahead whenever we're against the more numerous packs. Alright. Oh, nice. Fire res. Let's just try a two pull. See how hard this hits. We got a two-handed guy here. He just hit me for 2k. They're hitting for 3k. So this is putting a little bit more stress on the healer. But we're just testing it out. Nice blind from the rogue there. And I can demo shout, reduce their attack power, war stomp, stun him. And then prot warrior, you got concussion blow. Stun target for five seconds. He's on DR, so it was a little bit less than five seconds, but that's all good. We are dictating the pace of the fight by throwing in stuns. Alright, same thing. I'm going to give the rogue the easiest trap target. And then let's get the skull and the X. Okay, this guy might pull. I don't want to chain pull this guy and this pack as well, so I'm going to wait. I'm waiting. And then I'm going to pull the X further from this guy. We're going to pull it back. Use this hallway. We clear this hallway, it's a resource. We control this hall. So I shield slam him, I should have enough threat for a good while. And I'm just gonna work on my threat on the skull. Just working away at it. Getting nice and ahead. Nice and easy. Okay, Warlock is over there. We can go and pull this. People outside celebrating. Cast some fire magic. It can't be interrupted. Alright. We can get the warlock next. Oh, there's a rogue. Rogue in the hallway. Jumping on that healer. Tabbed over to Berserker Stance. Intercept him. Get a stun. And then we can taunt and get the threat. Gotta keep an eye on that. Another option you would have is you can defensive stance intervene. Alright, he's going to get ready for a sap. How loud is this fire working? 
Okay, we're pulling it back. Okay, this X, he just summoned a succubus. I'm gonna spell reflect whatever his fire magic is. Oh, went to the priest. So the succubus will seduce. It's a non-elite. I'm just gonna mark that triangle so they can see it a little bit better. And now we're gonna work on the X. So one thing that we could have done there with the X would be to earth shock it if you had a shaman or a priest could silence to interrupt that summon. Either of those would be fine. I'm just gonna pull this guy. I don't have rage spell reflect. Now I do. All right, we're gonna spell reflect this channel bolt. Nice, 2.7K. Now interrupt him. Try to gather this pull up a little bit. We got him marked. We're gonna take him out. Another one of these sword and board double pulls. Nice uh, wise flare there. Just checking around for rogues. Nice and easy. Keeping up that shield block. Tanking both of them. Throwing in a concussion blow. Big stun. And I've had some people say in the comments, how in the earth do you tank without health bars? You have the health bars there up here, but you just tab between them like this. So I can manage these two targets really fast with tab. I don't need to be clicking health bars and stuff on the screen. Makes it nice and clean mechanically. Okay, let's see. We might be able to get this pull. If he can get a clutch. Sap. Or a trap. Warden has sight. That's good to know. So the Warden, which would be the skull here, can see stealth. So let's just get this guy first, and then let's trap. Let's trap the square. I'm going to pull back. Line of sight pull. So the Warlock has to come in. I did mark the square for the Hunter to mark. The Priest mind controlled that. Now that's really nice, because... Now this isn't going to be putting down a bunch of traps on the floor. We can just control this mob for a bit. Nice Shadow Priest trick there. Oh, he released it. Careful of the bombs. It's good to move these, because you notice he's doing throw dynamite. I want to keep moving. I don't know if any of y'all have seen uh, Blackwing Lair, but there are a bunch of these goblin tech packs, and the goblin techs... They throw dynamite, but if you're running, they will throw to where you were, and they'll miss. So if you're fighting those technicians and you've got a bunch of room to move around, you can do so. Okay. We got enough threat on Skull now, I'm going to tab over and work on X. I'm just keeping an eye on this threat meter over here. Skull is fine, I missed him. Alright, I lost threat on him, so I just tabbed and taunted him. And with the duration of taunt, being a... How many seconds? It's like a three to four second effect. So if you think the target is going to die within that window, you can just taunt it. It'll be on you. You don't need to devastate it or anything. Okay, we could just sap that one. Do the pull like this. We're going to pull this one. There's a patrol over here. I'm just going to mark that star so we can see it a little better. So we don't get surprised. So he's stunning this. We're going to try to burst this one down. Well, we have a little bit of time. Okay, so their patrol round is just on that side of the room, so we're safe here. I'm gonna black this guy. And I'm gonna keep moving him, and I'm gonna watch the floor. The mines are these little uh, circular white things. Rogues can disarm them. Uh, some rogues, they don't know how to do it mechanically. It's a rogue spell. You put it on your bar. And then you hit the button for that if you hotkeyed it. And then you right click the the mine. Okay, so these there's no warden here. So we sap one. Let's just get a charge into a defensive stance shield slam. I get a shield block. All right. 
right. Let's give the rogue an easy sap. And this is a summoner, so I'm just gonna go up and slap a dampen. Because I don't want him summoning a succubus and standing over there while I'm shooting him with my bow. We are dictating the fight here. Those are super squishy. The problem arises in just letting them free cast summons in the back. Alright, first boss. So this guy mind controls somebody. Again, before you pull a boss, double check everyone's mana. We'll just throw a ready check here. Nice little step for anyone with DBM. We'll just eat a storm chop for fun. And we got a misdirect from the hunter. That's very nice of them. Misdirect means the threat that the hunter is causing is being directed to me, which is fantastic. So, we're just tanking the sky shield blocking him. He knocks you up in the air. Can't really do too much about that. Pretty simple fight. So he just took control of Spooky. It's the one thing I can give up. They feared him. That's great. I don't need to contribute anymore. But as the tank, I could concussion blow or I could disarm if it's uh, physical. Who got mind control? And there you go. Cape of Mysteries. Damage and healing. Great. All right. This whole corner here is just a traffic jam so be really careful there's a patrol that goes back and forth we'll just go ahead and mark that star so I can keep an eye on that and then for this pull it's gonna be a three pull we should be able to get a trap we could kill the skull and then sap the diamond all right they're gonna trap that Oh, okay. That didn't quite work out. We are just going to fight all of them, so this will be a fun example. So I've got this one. We need to back it up. Use this room. We created a nice resource here of space. The rogue is stun locking and soloing that one in the back. And these fell orcs hit pretty hard. They're all about that physical damage. And I'm just going to move these around the room as I'm tanking. I'm tanking and moving. I let the rogue solo that one. If a rogue uses cheap shot, kidney shot, gouge, all their different tricks, and then the range DPS focus that, they can take it out without the tank. That's another thing about tanking, is you can trust your DPS to handle one of them. If it's a caster-like thing that doesn't hit super hard and they do have some disable available. Okay, so he can disarm that trap. We'll just wait. And there it goes away. Now we can get this patrol next. And there is a rogue in the hallway. So we'll pull this group back here. Like this. Once again, utilizing the resource of the room that we cleared. I'm just going to pop a defensive trinket. Give my healer a little bit of extra space. The skull is almost dead, so I'm going to focus my threat on the X. Okay, now I'm going to go fight some assassins. There's one. Okay, just one here. I'll just build rage then. We got this fight down pat. Okay, let's get a sap, a trap, and a kill. The priest said he wants to mind control the X. We'll see. And he got it. So now he can just DPS with this guy. Oh, bear in mind as well. Mind control is a crap ton of threat. That was 25k threat and he only had a mind control for a little bit. I think about it like kind of the lore and the situation of the different abilities and how it feels to have that happen to you. An example would be if someone is off healing someone else in the distance, it's not really the most threatening thing to you. So it's pretty low threat. 
But if someone does a mind blast, which is like a migraine headache, I mean, that's that'll piss you off. So I get that. Okay, we might mind control that other one. I'm gonna shoot this. Line of sight. He's shadow bolting. Now he's coming. Priest got this. We can just let him keep fighting this stuff. This guy's got a couple of brass knuckles on. I don't know if he wants to hold on to that. Nope. So I intercept it. Taunt it. The taunt was resisted. So I mocking blow. And I got him again. But mocking blow doesn't catch you up in threat. Only taunt does. So I try to taunt again after that. Okay, we'll do this same thing. Get that last second interrupt. Resisted the taunt. I can intervene the priest. That would absorb the next attack coming in. And he, he's smart. He's just running. Because this thing will mess up his day. These ones hit pretty hard physically. He's hitting me for like 2k, 2k, 2k really fast. Whenever he's connecting. Just imagine that on a cloth theme. They'll be super dead. He'll just punch them for like 7k into an 8k and they're dead. Yep, don't resist. What is the last thing that the tank said to the DPS before the DPS died? Taunt resist. <laughs> okay, so he mind controlled there. But he was taking some bomb damage. Healer was able to heal through it. Great distract from the rogue. So the rogue just distracted that pack? Oh my goodness, the priest died. The MC can break early as well. If it goes for full duration, uh, mind control will last for about 45 seconds. But it can break early, so I'm just going to thunderclap these guys. I'm going to last stand. Whenever I'm up, last stand. Give my healer some more space. I'm going to pop a defensive trinket. Give my healer even more space. And we're good. So he should drop the mind control away from himself would be the safer call. So he would bring this over here and drop it or something. There's not infinite range for how long or how far away you can have the mind controlled unit. So he's maybe being careful about that. There should be another assassin back here. Yep, got him. All right. This is a big room with a bunch more packs. Some of them are pretty big. And this one has wardens in it too, which means the rogue can't sap. Could do some of this. Alright. I'm actually going to run up here and pull. The reason being I want to interrupt his summon. I'm going to keep pulling back though. If he's trying to summon Seductress, I pull it back. And I'm going to spell reflect the next fireball. And I'm going to keep pulling back. Keep pulling it back. We're going to use the hallway. There's a patrol up there. Keeping it up. Okay, priest mind control dropped. I'm going to intercept into a taunt. And there might be bombs here, so I'm just scanning the floor. There's a bomb. Rogue can disarm them. do this pack. I just realized the storm chops is what's causing the CC to break. Storm chops. Lightning occasionally zaps nearby enemies. Yeah. 
Okay, there's a bomb there. We gotta be careful. So he tried to walk to the mind control unit over the bomb. Didn't seem to work. As you can see there, the bomb dealt about half their health and damage. Which doesn't seem like too much until there are two bombs and then they're instantly dead. We can trap, but we cannot sap because the warden has two sight. Stealth detect on that. I'll just pull. Whatever is trapped is fine. If the skull gets trapped, who cares? Then this would be like this. And then these hit pretty hard. I'm going to disarm this guy. And I'm just going to tank all of them. Okay, he mind controlled one. Perfect. Throw in a war stomp. Disrupt in the pool. Let's do a knockback. They do hit pretty hard here. Got a taunt off. Let's just click this off. This is a little bit silly. That would be a really good buff to have in regulars, but if I'm breaking traps and saps and all that, we're causing problems. All right, two more packs in here. Let's get a sap. Let's get a slap. Let's get a mind control. Sap. And you could charge pull this one. Let's just try that. I'll shield slam this, and I'll start working on the skull. Shadow bolt gets cheap shot by the rogue. Nice. I'll stun him. He's all red and mad. You can thunderclap him as well. Lower the attack speed. Very good. Corruption. Interrupted. Very good. Okay. Let's get the sap on this. Gets the sap. Perfect. I will say Rogue is a very nice class to have in Heroics. Their CC is reliable and it's strong. In Vanilla, they had to talents back into being able to sap and stay in stealth. But in BC, all Rogues can just sap, stay stealth the whole time. They don't have to be subtle to spec. And now we're coming up on what's probably the hardest part of the instance. So this boss right here, this oogly eye guy he's a pushover these four right rooms of orcs that's the tough part so it's an endurance run we're gonna pull this lever and then this pack opens up the hunter wisely put a trap right by there the thing about this is we're put in combat right away which means we can't sap it's not on the table the rogue is dead so we want to use this full room to our advantage I used a fear there. The priest mind controlled one. I just want to keep an eye on what things are targeting. B res 14 minutes. Rogue is down. I'm going to taunt this one back. And this one's going to come out next. Hunter already has a trap. Excellent. Nice. I'm going to skull. Then X. So people know what to focus down. I'm going to demo shout these. Take some pressure off the healer. Thunderclap. Double resist. You know what that means. Defensive trinket. And then we're going to thunderclap again. Stunned. Physical stun. These guys chunk. Hunter's putting a trap with this next one. Mm 
He should probably be standing a little bit further back than where he is. I got a stun there. Now we're just beating him down. Priest mind controlled one. A rogue could blind one. A mage could sheep one. Another thing we could do, make it easier, just get an armor elixir. Maybe you don't have the same gear that I have. Well, you can use a bunch of different tools to improve your chances. You could even use an iron shield potion. The damage that you're taking here, it's pretty much all physical. So use the tools that you need. You could also get a food buff. Flasks are pretty cheap as well. It's like 50 gold for a flask and you can tank for two hours. That's like two heroics, not too bad. That CC didn't last very long. So I want to get this guy marked. He's got a triangle. I'm going to intercept this guy, get a stun off. Alright, making sure I have threat on everything. And remember, if you're DPS here, any different little stuns you can throw in. If you're a hunter, you could scatter shot. If you're a rogue, you can be doing cheap shot, kidney shot. All that stuff helps because the tank is going to be taking less damage. Sure, it doesn't look as good on the damage meter. If you're throwing out a cheap shot instead of something else. If you're throwing a kidney shot instead of an eviscerate. But boy, howdy, it is better to clear the content than it is to look good on the damage meter for two seconds and then wipe. So this guy is kind of like a, a budget Grobulus. He puts poison clouds on the floor and he shoots poison out the front. So people need to stay away from the face and you need to pull them out of the poison. There's a poison that can be cleansed. So you just kind of move him around the room. This is the easiest part of the fight. He hits like a wet noodle. Perfect. Don't forget to loot your badge. He drops some stuff, no doubt. Nice healer ring. Expertise Ack. Ack's pretty cool. There's a chest over there. But the rogue is still dead. He's really dead. Do we have a res for him? We got a res coming. Notice how this poison, it, it gradually radiates outward. That's interesting. Happy 4th of July, y'all. Okay. That pack we can skip. You can get a chest from it. Maybe you're wanting to get some chest. Okay, for these ones they do hit pretty hard, especially when they have this fell power thing. There's an assassin on the healer. So, keep that in mind, assassin on this side of the room. Be quick about it. Could probably kill that. Sap that. Decent plan. Okay, charging in. Gonna focus this brute. Disarmed. Hey, where's your big mace, bud? He's disarmed. He doesn't have it. He deals way less damage. A lot of your abilities require a main hand weapon equipped, and he can't use those. That's the power of disarm. Some of that warrior utility. Easy warlock. And then this one. Oh, hey, buddy. We'll just go ahead and pull this guy next. So we'll get the sap kill. It's marked. We'll wait until the fell power is waned. We can also do these two. 
because they're just kind of rotating around this pillar. We will want to kill them eventually, though, because it opens up this room area. Okay, fell power is about to expire. We pull. We blood rage. We shout. We DPS. We are amazed at the bang boom pow of the fireworks. And hope you're tolerating this during this guide. I don't normally have fireworks going off during my guides. I could tell them to stop it, but they're celebrating. Okay, mana is full. We're going in. Just gonna charge shield slam. I'm gonna get a disarm on skull. I'm gonna work on X. You do have to address the skull and the X a little bit. See how hard those hit? Almost killed the hunter in about a second. You can give your DPS a reminder. Please wait for one or two seconds before you go ham on the DPS. Some people may abide that, others may not. But it's worth a try. Okay, bunch of non-elites plus a warlock. Pretty easy line of sight pull. Just gonna pull this. This. Shout. Get initial threat on all of them. And he got some hella healer threat. I'll throw a challenging shout. So all these are on me. I can also spell reflect. The rogue can handle the warlock on his own. It's no problem at all. So you don't need to make sure you hold aggro on every single thing. A rogue can handle a caster enemy, even in a heroic, pretty easy 1v1. Alright, that's a pretty easy room. Need to watch out for assassins. Could be some in this hallway. Looks like it's clear. Now, these guys are a pain in the butt. If you have a warlock, you could banish them or enslave them, but since we don't, uh, we're just going to have to tough it out. We might be able to trap. I'd say it's worth a try. I don't know if they are. Okay, we're going to pull. Try to walk one of those into it. Okay, you get this one then. Nice cheap shot. So these can be stunned with physical damage. These can be disarmed. And I can demo shout. Don't need to thunderclap because we've got a thunder fury effect on it. Bang, bang, bang. Alright, we also want to clear this. We'll sap him. Kill this one. I marked the square trap this time because it's going to be the first one that walks by. I'm just going to trap down. I'm waiting for this fill power. There we go. And I blood rage. He walks over the trap. It doesn't work. He walks over the trap and it also doesn't work. I would say you just gotta be patient with Blizzard. It's a small company. They've got a bunch of people working around the clock to make this game even stay online. Alright. Gonna get this guy. Trying to spell reflect, but sometimes they kick. Let's get a sap, kill, trap. He's opening boxes. Oh no. <laughs> he got blapped. Sometimes they see you. 
and sometimes they resist. It's tough. You gotta respect the bravery of the rogues who are sneaking right next to somebody like that. Bang, bang. Oh, that's the finale. Okay. You try again. He's trying. Will he get it this time? He does a distract. He gets a sap. And we'll wait for the spell power. Two, one. And I'll pull. Over the trap. It worked this time. I disarm. And then when the disarm ends, I could stun, but the rogue already stunned. So I'll wait. And I'll stun the next one. Open it up with the revenge and would disarm. Oh wait, it's on cooldown. I meant to stun. But he dodged. It happens. Nope. You can't cast that. Alright. Big pull. Uh, all channelers, which are basically warlocks. I think that should work, so he's gonna sap this one. We're gonna trap the first one that walks around the corner. I'm just telling him. And as soon as he gets a sap, we can pull. Can he do it? There's a nice uh, aspect too of being in a run is just being consistently nice to people and being patient with them. It goes a long way. You're fools! They're all He'll yelling. Kill us all! So I shout, get some initial threat on everybody. We're bringing them around the corner. Around the corner. We got the trap. Gonna devastate X. Just getting a revenge on Skull. Shield slam. I can concussion blow pretty easy. He's casting shadow bolts and whatnot. Well, that was not too bad. Shadow bolt hits for 846. It's not too bad. With heroics, it can be pretty weird of whether or not the units hit much harder or about the same. Certain spells, they'll hit about the same on normal and heroic. But certain spells will hit way harder. An example would be the... The Shadow Priests in uh, Shadow Labs, their mind play slaps. Alright, this guy, he's like a caster guy. He says, uh, come closer and burn. You actually should not come closer, you should run away from him. So he pulls everybody in, run out. Okay. He does a pulse, one, two. And then he comes at you. He puts a vulnerability thing on you, which you can dispel with a magic dispel. Aside from that, pretty simple tank and spank. Stamina crit, not bad. Doom plate gloves. So, the reason I wanted to run this place, uh, Blood Furnace, would be for this trinket. Icon of Unyielding Courage, hit rating 30, attacks ignore 600 of the enemy's armor. This is Threat Biss in this phase for tanks. I'm gonna ask them if they're cool with me needing the gem. It's decent for PvP, but I wouldn't take it over someone's main spec if they want it for PvE. See what they did. Greed. Greed, greed. And it's BOP as well. Hmm. 
Oh, cool. Oh, another good drop here if you're a tank would be the uh, Eagle Crest War Boots. These are just pretty solid boots. They're kind of like a more defensive chromatic boot. They've got the strength, the edgy, and the stam. Well, hope you all enjoyed this walkthrough of Blood Furnace Heroic. Best of luck in y'all's runs. Don't forget to repair before you leave town. And ancestors watch over you. I'll see you next time.